Oh, oh, that's not high enough. Oh, that doesn't matter. Let me frame this a little bit so you can see the ADOS down there a little bit more. Oh, yeah. There you go. Come on. I like that one. I switch it on. I put my bronze. Yeah, I'm feeling some way. I gotta do something. Uh, I actually, uh, this particular thing, where I'm, I'm, this is a test. <laughs> it's gonna be a long test. It's something I gotta run. Uh, it's a long story. Well, I mean, let me put it this way. I had to get another phone for another for a couple of reasons, right? So now I got basically now I got three phones. But anyway, um, but I had to get an app put on. This other phone, it took me like weeks and weeks and da 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 da, da back and forth from them I'm talking to T-Mobile. They they can't do the third party apps. Then I, you know, I finally write. Well, I, the company sent me a, a thing that said to do something. I did something that didn't work. And then I finally got, I, well, I didn't get upset. I, I just I sent out. So let me send them an email. So I sent them an email. And as I sent them an email, then I called uh, T-Mobile back because they got this plan on that they give you an expert. And they're really good, actually. I sort of like them. Anyway, so I was talking, as I talked, I was trying to explain some things that I said, I said, oh, wait a second, this thing came back on. So then he explained to me that a lot of these companies, what happens, especially in this day and age, you know, it's like the old days, uh, you know, it goes on, something happens, then if you finally write them an email, I think better if you let it, but if you write them an email, then they respond because they want you to, you know, it's a strange time. It's a strange, it's an interesting time in the, in the time of COVID. Plus we want this sort of like precipice because a lot of a lot of companies realize that the economic system is crashing. I mean, it's it's going to go down. Believe me, I've been listening to Max Kaiser for years, and I was talking to um to my brother here, a uh, buddy, um, and he because I'm not in New York anymore. Well, I'm in New York right now, but I mean, I'm about to go down to Virginia to vote, right? and then I'll be there for a month for Thanksgiving. Then I then I go straight back to St. Louis. <laughs> Ooh, but St. Louis, I finally got. I think I'll be doing some writing, uh, some planning, some doing some stuff that I got interesting things happening in St. Louis that I can work on. But in talking to Buddy here, see, because he has BAI here, and I guess I can get BAI wherever I am. And uh, Doug Henwood, who I know for years, he was he's saying the same thing that Max has been saying. Then I something in the back of was strange, in you know, a weird back of my mind. I think it was in the late '80s. I swear, and I gotta find out that Doug Henwood actually had Max Kaiser on because i i distinctly remember that doug henwood was interviewing max max was like in florida on a, on a yacht or something like that some weird some, some strange i gotta ask somebody that maybe i can't ask doug now because i ain't gonna uh, i can't ask him All right, bro, whatever and uh anyway to put the point is the system is going down and 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 um it's all going to switch over and what people i've been trying to tell people for years i said look Check out Max Kaiser. See, I'm not a money person. It don't matter to me, right? But for some strange reason, since the late 90s, I've just been following this money thing. First at NPR, with the, the money mark, whatever they had. And I just, just listened to it like entertainment, you know? Then when I got to uh, Alice in 2014, then I just started listening to Max because it was on RT, you know? And then, then he was just, he's like my tribe, you know? He's like, everything, he's like, I don't want to he's not an absurdist, but everything is absurd. And so he acts, he acts, he acts like I would act you know, in this situation. But everything Stacy and Max have said has come to, to fruition. He's, they say years ahead. And now it's getting to be like months ahead because people are starting to catch up, you know? The agent internet is very interesting. You have to pick who you're going to listen to. So between this guy, there's James Corbett out of uh, out of uh, um, the northern part of Japan. He does, he does a lot of interesting stuff. Um, a lot of other stuff happened. But I'm... I'm I'm rambling on because, like I said, this is a test. I'm doing something. But um, what's really happening is I was trying to figure out there's a lot of stuff that's been happening to me. One of the things, because I came back this time and I did something I didn't do the other times, I've been, well, I actually walked the Bronx from, you know, from where I was, where I was grew up basically in a passion project to where I was born, you know, um, in Marcina section, to where I went to, finally went to school. Both, both both areas, which was which would be a Theodore Roosevelt High School and Bronx High School of Science. Bronx High School of Science. Bronx High School. I never went to Bronx High School. Of I ain't that smart. <laughs> I mean, um, Bronx Community College. You know, and I realized it all on the, the spine of Third Avenue. I call it the spine of Third Avenue. So these these thoughts are coming to mind, and then I do kind of weird things, right? 
like I was looking up, I had to do something on Trump, you know what I mean? I, I never check anybody's background. My, my stuff I could like, eh, if it comes to my head. And I, I, I forgot, well, I forgot, I didn't really know. He went to Fordham University, right? But he was in Fordham University in like 1966. And I was up at the Rosa Rose High School in 66, which means basically we probably crossed paths because the only, hey, the way he eats, and even back then, everybody, the matter if you, university student, you was high school student, everybody met at the White Castle up there, you know? So I probably crossed this path. The reason why I say that, because this whole thing that's been happening to me lately, I've been thinking about, I've had a, like an estranged, incredible, weird, I'll say life. It's like, I keep, I, I, I've been exposed, I've been meet a lot of different kinds of people and different kinds of strata because of the kind of situations I've been in. But then I had this other thing because what got me back into school because I, when I went to Bronx Community College, we took over the school. And so I basically, uh, for, let's just say, to put it politely, you know, I, I sort of got kicked out. Well, it, it doesn't matter. I, <laughs> We took over to school. We got we, we got what our demands, you know, black faculty and all the rest of the stuff, and then you know whatever. But uh, what got me back into school? And I was just turned off of, of college then. But what got me back in school? When I was in the Air Force. I started taking these extension courses from Trenton State State College when I was down at McGuire Air Force Base, and um, and uh, my my philosophy professor I had for like I think we only had for three courses. Had them for logic, which a if you're in school now, please take logic. Whether you're high school, I don't care what school, take logic because the, at least the school says this, this um, indoctrination system is based on Aristotelian logic. That means if you know Aristotelian logic, you'll sail through school. <laughs> you know, so that, um, what else? Uh, that, comparative religion, right? That's something else. Logic, comparative religion. I forgot something else. Any These three uh, philosophy courses really... It's like the base of whatever happened. Now I say all that to go back and say something that's gonna sort of put all the stuff together. Um, I grew, I grew up like I said, I grew up. The, well, the Catholic Church was where I, you know, I uh, was indoctrinated to, you know, baptized and blah 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 blah. At seventeen, I said, ah, I'm gonna forget this stuff, right? But I, in catechism, we had these catechism things, and you know, we learned. I guess I, I would call it doctrine of the Catholic Church, right? In fact. I won't get into that. That's some other, for some other thing. But I always remember, the thing I remember, they always say that God sees you wherever you are. I found that kind of strange, you know? But then when I was taking philosophy, um, and I guess it was, maybe it was comparative religion or something like that, we, I mean, I remember asking uh, Dr. Clauser, um, I said, well, or, or we said, no, it's class. Well, I asked him, but it was the class. And we said, well, you know, you're, you're a philosopher. You don't really sound like you believe all this stuff. You know what I mean? It's like, you're a philosopher. Why do you go to church? I forgot what he was, like Methodist or something. Some, some really, you know, lame, you know, lame where they go, no, oh, that kind of, he's not like, ah, I'm dying, you know what I mean? Like that. He said, well, he goes for fellowship, you know. Well, he didn't say the fellowship. He said, you know, for, for basically the people, you know, it's like a community thing. It really wasn't for this, the doctrine of the church or anything like that. And I always thought about that. But then there's another particular point, and, and so hold that thought, stick a pin it, as I said, hold that thought, let me, I'm not supposed to be drinking, I can't explain it to you, but I was in Whole Foods and I found this, not Whole Foods, I was in, uh, where the heck was I, Trader Joe's? No, it was Whole Foods, and I found this, I was walking out, no, it was, it was Trader Joe's, and I found this slightly acclaimed KBS of flavored stout, like, I like stout beers, you know what I mean? I, I can't drink wines anymore. I think there's some sulfite. There's some stuff to me, but this is a, is a good, it's good for everything, and flavored, uh, the flavored oh stout, drought, uh, to be good for, ale brewed with oh is this ale brewed with chocolate, and coffee, aged in a barrel. Where's my other glasses? I should put on my other. I can't read this thing. But anyway, what got me, when I saw, see, I'm not chewing the coffee, when they said chocolate, <laughs> you say stout, you say chocolate, I don't know, man. I always tell people, if if they have, if I was ever doing some weird thing behind enemy lines or something like that, and they caught me and they wanted to torture me, i say, hey, you don't have to torture me. Just give me some dark chocolate. I'll tell you anything you want to know. Anyways, so, so I got this thing. There's only four of them. So even though I'm not drinking... Uh, I think I will do this. And the way I do this stuff here, here's the way I do my stuff, man. I know you're not supposed to do it. I just pour this stuff in here. I just pour the sucker in there. 
like that and I let the whole head come up I enjoy that now maybe I'm breaking some sort of rule I don't know but I do what I want to do I've always done what I wanted to do for some reason you know anyway back to the point um, wait let me get this other thing hold on I got this new tablet I want to take before I take this beer the black man told me about this uh, melatonin you know you should have melatonin every day I guess I don't know but I just like the taste. Mmm. I had this other night. I like the taste. With the beer. Anyway. So one thing you say, I'm going to say that, well, God sees you where you are. Okay. Makes sense, I guess. So, no. But then I had this thought when I was taking philosophy that my concept of God was that God sort of went through everything. You know, went through you. It connect, God connected everything. God is not really... Well, wait. First of all, my whole thing was like, Whatever create whatever created me, God, whatever you want to call it, creator, the universe, created me. I can't, this is what I got out of class. I can't put any anthropomorphic face to it. I can't I can't uh put it put this concept into words. I can't I can't put an image on anything like that. In other words, the force that created me, I'm talking about me personally, was so bad. Well, bad meaning this is black I'm talking black talk now. This 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 force was so bad. That I can't conceive of it. Hold on to that. The force, the cre the creation, the universe, the whatever, the the situation that created me personally. You know, you know. Of course, you know. Of course, I insist that I I was I was hanging out wherever I was hanging out, and then I said, uh, you know, I think I want to come down to Earth. Let me go do this, mommy and this daddy, because I know I need, I need this situation because I can hook up with this grandma. Because I need this grandma, because I am my grandmother's grandchild. And I need that force. I need I need to go through this lineage. Yeah. Oh yeah, because that grandma she come from the from the Gullah and the Mohawk. Yeah, I, I need that, right? And then I need I need a I need a daddy. Just need a, the, the mommy and the daddy just you know, they just, you know, they're they're the combustions that <laughs> that they bring me in. But anyway, the point is I can't conceive of of what everybody says God or whatever have you. So because I can't conceive of God, because it's it's like it's so the thing is so bad that I don't waste my time conceiving one of it. <laughs> Everybody else, oh Lord, where they they go that? I don't even think about that stuff. I know sometimes I make like I do, but I don't. The effect when I pray, when I pray, I say, you know, I pray in tongues in the morning, whatever have you, and I'm I'm praying to that. Again, the the, the sounds I'm making have no there. There's no reference to him just like there's no reference to the force that created me you understand okay so so what happens all throughout the day because i because i acknowledge my catholic or my, my christian or whatever you want to say upbringing but also acknowledge that i have a um a, i have a lot of education in the yoruba pantheon yoruba you know pantheon you know from from nigeria africa and west west africa i mean if you I once said, if you put, if you put, a, if the devil put the gun to my head, this is the old philosophical thing. And they said, you had to pick one religion. What would you pick? I would pick voodoo because it makes more sense to me. And that's sort of like Catholic. The, the, the Catholics took, sort of took from voodoo. You know what I mean? That's why the Catholics don't mess with voodoo. But but if I had to be some sort of priest or something, it would be the Akan. So it's still be West Africa. Anyway, back to the point. Um, let me let me take a sip of this. Uh, it's fine. Chocolate, coffee, stout. <laughs> So anyway, so, so 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 this force that it was just when, so when I pray, and then all throughout the day or whatever happens, something happens, good, bad, or indifferent. I just want to acknowledge. That's, I just say thank God, meaning the Christian guy, and praise the Lofi, which is like, like basically Yoruba for God. So I, I, I do the do, do the double thing. Like, like that. Okay, so that's how I sort of carry on my day. But this just came about. I want to say recently, but it's, it finally concretized. I would do certain things, like all during my life, I do these sort of kind of spiritual things. But in the last, I say maybe three, four years, it really concretized. So I really get what it is. Then I'm thinking, see, one of the things I did in, in, in the 80s, aside from dealing a lot with um, healing, health, health kind of things, I also got exposed from Lloyd Strayhorn, you know, um, who's like, you know, related to a uh, musician, Strayhorn. I won't get off there. Uh, numbers, you know what I mean, and I just use I use numbers because when I was traveling a lot back then, it was, astrology was sort of big, but it's sort of difficult to do astrology if you don't know when you was born, the time you was born, blah blah blah. I know all that stuff, you know, and I, I first I know 
I know I'm a, I'm a cancer with what's called a uh, Scorpio decant. You know, my my uh, my uh, uh, my rising sign is Scorpio, and my um, my moon is in uh, uh, Pisces, something like that. That messes me up. That humanitarian thing, I'd be like fierce if it wasn't for that. Anyway, but 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 I was think I would say like it was easy for me to do numbers, and that was but they were they were fun. So it was like Paul again. I don't really follow numbers. I mean, I don't really do it. You know, what I mean? but there's this whole thing about. The Rosicrucian cycles in, in numbers. I love the Rosicrucian. Right before I went to uh, to to the Eastern Cape, I was st starting. I went to Institute a couple of times in Cape Town. There was only one in all the Southern Hemisphere I know of the Rosicrucian. They have a study kind of thing there. It's in Cape Town, and I was I was starting to go there. If I didn't go to the Eastern Cape, I would have been studying Rosicrucian, right, even right now probably. Anyway, but they have this thing. There's four four phases of life four phases you go through as you as you develop right there's the physical phase the mental phase the sexual phase and the spiritual phase and these phases are just I mean these are optimum time for your physical growth your mental growth your spiritual your sexual growth your spiritual growth right and so anyway let me just cut to the chase so right now um um i'm i'm, I'm 70 right so between basically between 63 and 72 is your second coming of your of your of your spiritual phase in other words, between 27 and 36 is your first time you go through your physical. Well, let me go through the whole thing for you. From zero, from from minus nine months to nine years old is your physical growth. You know what I mean? You see, you see, then from 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 basically say 10 to or nine, uh, 10 to 18 is your mental growth. You know, you start questioning things and that. Uh, but then from from 19 to 27 is your sexual growth. Like, you know, it just it means your sexual en your energy is like that. That's where they grab all these folks in that age. You know, they, that's that's where you get your. You, you just get your whatever you, you act out or whatever from 27 to 36 is just it's just it's your um uh, uh spiritual growth some other time i'm going to, which which is why it's proper if you're if you're if you're a, um, a woman you really should have your baby between say 25 and maybe 30 say three or something right there because by the time you have your baby then you should be in your physical your, your spiritual phase so you can bring some spirituality whatever i can't talk for men right now I'm going to get into that. Let me, let me go back. So, so then, then you then you go then then these repeats again. So from basically um, uh, 37 to 45 is your physical growth again. You know your second round of physical growth. Um, uh, 46 to 52 is your second round of your mental growth. From uh, 55 to 63 is the second round of your sexual growth. Um, um, let's just let's stop this because everybody's always interested in sex. That's where if you notice that's from 55 to 63. That's when the men have their they manifest their midlife crisis. So if you're some big time mogul, you know, you get rid of your first wife, you get your trophy wife and all the rest of that stuff. You start acting out and trying to be in love with the young girls and all the rest of that stuff. Uh, anyway, from so 63 to 72 is your next spiritual growth, your second go round, your spiritual growth. So I realize right now I'm in my spiritual second round of spiritual growth and so many things have been happening. This is why numbers are good to me because I, when something's really happening, I, I'm trying to find an answer for it, whatever have you. But then I just look at the numbers and I say, oh, okay, you know, it doesn't do anything. It doesn't stop me from doing anything. I just keep on going. But now some stuff has been happening, you know. Like, for instance, for the last, for whatever, the last few days, I was thinking heavy. On Intisaki Shange, right? I don't know why. I was just thinking really heavy on Intisaki Shange. And I met Intisaki I met. Uh, I saw Color Girls. I saw Color Girls. When was that? No, I saw it. I saw it on Broadway. When I went to Broadway, I don't think I saw it at the public theater. I went to Broadway. It was the first thing. First I had a reading at Frank Serrera's workshop, and then it went I mean, Woody, some someplace else, a workshop thing. And then it went to a uh, public theater, and then it went to Broadway. I think I saw it when it was on Broadway. But she came when I was in my, my first um, uh, graduate school for playwriting. She came. She taught a part of the semester. I was doing doing Avery's class, Avery, Avery's, Avery Brooks class, the, the, the theater class. And so she, so I met her there, you know what I mean? And I wrote a play, she, and she looked at it, you know, talking about whatever she said. So I'm sort of, man, into Saki. She knows who, whatever. But that's when she also did a thing called, uh, one of her greatest plays, I think, was a thing called uh, a, a Portrait Study, uh, yeah, A Portrait Study in Cruelty. You know, I think they renamed it for something like that. Anyway, it's a great play. I think it's one of her best plays, you know? Anyway, um, so, and yet we, you know, she, I mean, her and Avery one time, they were like, they were whispering and looking at me. So I think they were like plotting, you know, because I was a handful. I'm telling you, I was a holy terror. <laughs> okay. 
<laughs> anyway, but the point is, uh, so and, then, and throughout the years, you know, I'd see Saki sometimes, you know, blah, 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 blah. It wasn't like anything like that. For some reason, you know, okay, I say all that, say, I didn't know it, but two years ago on this day, October 27th, right now it's October 27th, nighttime, is when Saki passed. She transitioned. She was basically, she just turned 70, or she had just turned, because I think she was born on like the, I don't know, the 27th of October or something like that. And, and then, no, no, it's 27th. She was born on like the, I don't know, 17th, 18th, 18th of October, some some, some other time in October, uh, early, like a week before. Anyway, she passed right around her birthday. At the end, her birthday went and she, she passed. And for some reason, I was thinking heavy on her. And one of the things about, especially living in Africa, I hate when I get emails sometimes because then they talk about people who, who died and stuff like that. And I'm really, I'm not, I'm not into that sort of mindset, man. I don't think about death or nothing like that. You know, my thing is like, I live, I like when, one, one, one woman said, you know, you, you should have been dead a long time ago. And I tend to agree. <laughs> I tend to agree all this stuff, man, I'll tell you. Anyway. So I don't really think about that. I don't think about age. And I don't think about any of that stuff. But I say all that, you know, aside from running this test that I'm doing right now, I'll end it pretty soon, is that this coming this particular trip when I went, you know, do my land and my birth, you know, the Third Avenue spine. I mean, I felt certain things, you know. It's really, it's really interesting, and I, I and every time I could connect things. I think the older you get, you can connect things more. Like I said, I was talking to Buddy earlier, and it's like he has to do this lecture on uh, on on, um, on 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 Tulsa on Black Wall Street. He's got to do some lecture on it. And he knew about it. So, but he says he's going through stuff. And he's seeing stuff. That he knew it, but it triggers. You know? So that's what happens. When you get older, it triggers certain things. And you sort of adjust, you know. And so anyway, so 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 that's what's been happening in my little life. I just wanted to let you all know that right now. I mean, I'm wearing my, I love this hat. This is my, my wife made this hat. and um, But I helped her because this little, there's this, there's this thing in here. that's like a little sweatband right there. And that's why I put on a hat. And like when I work with other people, I bought, bought my brother. I don't like the people call people. My brother-in-law. This is uh, my sister's husband. Well, I guess technically is my brother-in-law. I just call him my brother. Yep. I thought he's my brother because my older brother died this year. So I, you know, you know, I just bought him. and He liked these hats. So I just what's the thing? I got one of these hats for him. You know, so he can have this hat. You know, it's one of the West African kind of hats, like that. So I got this one. I don't know how to find this. Let's see, because he likes these things. I put him another one because it's small. Well, I think this is gonna be too big for him. Uh, let's hope he likes it. Anyway, he likes to wear these things. I think he just likes to, whatever. You know? But I'm not really into them that much, so. Look at that. I hope it's not too big for him. All that means is that, hey, I'll just have to get him another one another time when I come back to, you know, come to someplace, come together or something like that. Come back to New York together. You got it for the real, the real, the African marketplace on 116th Street, you know, they, they go to vendors and put them in that little marketplace and hope that people would come to them, you know. I like to support, you know, little things. Be they African, whatever it is, black, whatever it is. So, and it gives, gives you a feel after when I'm there too. So, so I say all that, say that there's something, when I, what I'm trying to say is when you go through these phases, you should enjoy the phase that you're in, you know? And I'm, I'm telling you, I'm having a ball. I just started to deal with, uh, with uh, what's that, Instagram? I'm fun on Instagram. This, Instagram was pretty fun, you know? Um, this, this, uh, my YouTube channel is just for the chronicle of certain things in, in my life or whatever have you. Or, and for me to recant certain things because I think, I just think, right? I just talked to my man in South Africa today and hopefully next week I'll get an interview with him uh, trying to put together, uh, thinking about the stuff that's happening in Africa because, you know, no matter what ADOS says, you know, or the leaders of ADOS says, you know, I, yeah, I'm ADOS in my head, but, you know, I'm still, uh, for lack of a better term, I'm still Pan-African. I'm still, I'm still black. I'm, I'm universally black. Hey, when I'm in, hey, when I'm in India, I hang out with the Dalits. 
<laughs> like, you know, we have I'm, I'm with the low, I'm with the I'm with the peoples, you know what I mean? That's my secret, you know what I mean? I'm always hanging with the peoples. I don't try to be with the family. But with the peoples is kinda of interesting because one last thing about this whole spiritual thing. I had this this other thing that happens. I actually when I when I talk about Trump being at White Castle at the same time that somehow we, we cross paths, but 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 the model if you were walking someplace, your molecules stay there. Somehow it's like sloughing off skin, you know. So you're in the air, the, the atmosphere is like I don't want to say like COVID, you know, but the atmosphere is like that. The only way I can explain it is like um, I'll, I'll give you this. Um, I was hanging out with this sister at, at Drew University back in the day, right? And Moshe Diane came to speak there. So you know, hey, you know, so we went to the we went to see a speech, and afterwards I have this habit, you know. Usually, I'm like the only black person. I used to be the only black person in the damn. That was called talk to the person afterwards, or whatever happened. I just think I have this streak of like trying to find out things from people. I talk to anybody. I don't care who you are. Right? You could be the worst killer in the world. I want to talk to you, right? <laughs> find out some motivation why you did what you did or whatever it is. And so, you know, he shook hands with me. And he started going about Ralph Bunch. You know what I mean? He really had respect for Ralph Bunch. Okay. Now, years later, I'm at. Cape, I'm at University of, of, of Cape Town, you know, and uh, Ralph Bunch, that's where he went to graduate school. And he actually went to Eastern Cape. So all those places, you know, it's like, how can I say, it's like Ralph Bunch mo molecules are with me. Now, nobody knows about Ralph Bunch. Nobody's going to talk about Ralph Bunch, you know what I mean? He's, he's the first, he's a black guy that won the Peace Prize. And he did it, he won the Peace Prize the hard way. You know, he had to bring Israel and, and whoever else together. And he that's why uh, Moshe Dayan had such respect for him. You know, without any arms, there's no threats or anything. That he just used pure, you know, brother, brother rap. <laughs> he used he's a real talk about diplomacy. You know, the ultimate form of of, of the art of war, as I say, is diplomacy. Um, so I did that, but then I then I started to think, yeah. So you know, so I have the molecules of both Moshe Dayan and 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 and, and uh, Ralph Bunch hanging around here. I don't know who went went to Theodore Roosevelt High School. A bit Donald Trump, I got those some molecules there, but I also shook hands and I met. You know, when I was in Cuba, I I I met Sada Security, Security. You know, so I shook her hand. You know, now but at the same time, you know, I shook hands with Thomas Sakata. You know what I mean? I shook up with, with Kenneth Coon. I tell you this all the time. With 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 Ch Chappie James. So it's weird. It's weird. I'm, uh, what I'm trying to say is that, like when 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 I was with, when I was with Chappie, when I, when I was um when I was ex when I, when I was hanging with Chappie James, I want to say it that way. I wasn't hanging with him, but you know, he was talking to a bunch of us airmen. You know, that's when I was in the Air Force. Now he said at that point when he left, he said when he left the military, he was going to go to Africa and train some. You know, I, I don't know what Air Force he was going to train, but how to basically be fighter pilots, right? That hey, he died. He never made it. I ain't saying I don't. I'm not into conspiracy theories that way. The theories that way, but I'm just saying. All I'm trying to say is, it's got to be. I've a sort of, I sort of have this obligation. You know what I mean? And not to say all the 60s, all the black arts movement and all the black power thing. I was at this thing one time at Long Island University with all the, the big wigs at the time, you know, whoever it was. Um, the, all of them. All, all, I don't know. I'm, the big people at that time, in like 69 or whenever it was. They were all there, But they would each speak. And they would. it's almost like they would contradict and everybody would get applause. But the next person would say something. I'm, I'm sitting in the back and I'm saying, but they said something that's... that's that's, that's opposed to what the Irish person said. Why is everybody getting the same amount of applause? So I learned something there too. Everybody has their own opinion. Everybody has a, a or as, as nearly fully Jr. would say, only their VGQ, a victim's um, uh, uh, guaranteed qualifications to say whatever you want to say, then you can't really, you know, dispute that. That's what they say because you're a victim of racism, you know what I mean? White supremacy. So anyway, so what I'm trying to say is that I actually feel instead of people should be, um, the unity that people... The unity that people keep on saying that black people should have, I don't look at, we should have unity. What we should have is VGQ. You know, it's of respect. Respect is just like this. They say what they say. If that sister is twerking, the sister is twerking. You ain't got nothing to say about the sister twerking. That's how she's handling her, that's how she's handling her, 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 her slavery trauma. Let's put it that way. If this brother, you know, you understand what I'm saying? And, and we shouldn't, the unity that we need right now is the unity of not putting down one another. You know, let and when uh, when somebody is putting you down, then you automatically they're out the tribe. That's not the unity you want. I I can't even say it that way because that's that's not what I mean. 
I'll get it together someday. I'll, I'll, I'll figure out what it is. But the, what I'm trying to say, the unity we need right now is just to have a, that's why to me reparations are so important. You can focus on reparations and come from any, any, uh, any angle you want to come and go for that. But you can do it without uh, tearing somebody else down that also has a thought in reparations because there's nothing new under the sun. Let me let me give uh, uh, this the last example here. I swear, I stop talking. A few weeks ago, I, I did a uh, I was, like I said, I do the Instagram thing, and I was doing this series in in, um, in uh, St. Louis where you know I talk into the camera. It's my morning routine, walking with the dog. Then I say something. I'm more concentrated here. Here, with 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 my YouTube, I just meander. You know, I just ah, you know, but I'm more focused. But I would always listen to um, a piece of music, and then I would come from that piece of music and tie it to whatever I was saying. And one of the things I brought up was "Be Movie" by by um, Gil Scott Heron. Lo and behold, this last week on on YouTube, somebody was a professor was talking about "Be Movie." Now I could say, "Oh, he list he shared my Instagram. He gave a B Movie." That's not what it is. I really believe that the molecules are working. The, the, the I call it at times the zeitgeist the zeitgeist, whatever you call that, the atmosphere is such that you can have, people can have different thoughts at different times because it's in the air. The and You want to say the answer, something is speaking to us. And so that consciousness raises up. So so if if, if that idea about Bibu, because it's political, whatever, have it, raises up, I don't claim because I said it first, you know, well, you know, because you know, whatever, that, oh, they put, you know, you just don't do that. You just, you do what you do. If you if somebody's biting off something else, it doesn't matter because it existed before anyway. Before you even existed, it existed. You know, this whole thing about reparations. Sure, there's a lot of people that came through reparations and that, but we don't dwell on them. It's like you just don't dwell on them. You take and you put them into the mix of what's happening now to move move us along. <sighs> so I had to say all that because, uh, like I said, I'm testing something out. Uh, just be patient. Uh, you're, you're not supposed to be listening to this anyway, so it doesn't it doesn't really matter because you know this is just an old man raving. You know what I mean? Old man being me. T from the Pattersons taking the train to Tibet, letting you know what I only suspect.